Hi, everybody. It's September 19, 2019. Harvey. Worse than Harvey. That's what I'm hearing a lot in these news reports. Overnight, 10 to 30 inches of rain have fallen. 10 to 30 inches. Overnight. This is a live broadcast of what is happening in Southeast Texas. And, well, I'm going to show you what is going on in Southeast Texas. I'd like to hear from my subscribers in Southeast Texas. I hope to God that you are okay. And I want to thank my subscriber for sending this live broadcast to me. This is a hotel in Beaumont, Texas. Where did it go? Right here. Everything will be linked to below. Let's listen just for a few minutes what they're saying now. Uh, just impossible to drive in the worst of weather conditions on the roadways here. This is, you know, we're following Text.Beaumont Beaumont on Twitter here, just scanning over. Closed. Right, and it's just one image after another. Hence, why you're being told to stay put where you are. And I know sometimes it's hard. You look out the window, you're seeing the reports, you're hearing about these rescues and the airboats out. It makes you anxious and makes you want to leave, but. We can promise you oftentimes when you leave, it is far worse out there facing the elements than staying put where you are. And you can just see once again, this is a big dually truck making its way through the water. And even if you do have a, a vehicle, a, a so-called high water vehicle, still be careful. Know what you're doing. You never know what's out there. And All right. Uh, this is Imelda right now. This is current radar. It's 2.22 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. And I want you to see, um, I'm going to be showing you captures of Melda and how it has been held in place and how they are targeting specific areas with these severe downpours. So this red, that's where you're getting the most rain. This red seems to be held in place as Imelda is held in place, as Imelda is fed with more precipitation. And look, Imelda now is developing, oh, well, a horn. Um, I'm focusing on Texas right now. If you have any information about what's happening in Louisiana, particularly Lake Charles, could you post links below? Now, do you see how nicely squared off the plasma is? And how nicely squared off Amelda is on her east side? It's all manufactured. I sure wish we had a way to get through to people because watching so many people get destroyed and watching and listening to those who are saying it's a repeat. Listening to these broadcasts and you hear so many just got back into their homes after Harvey and now they're booted out again because weather is being used as a weapon. Look at this. Look at this uh, precipitation created here northwest texas okay wow man we are really living something that is it's hard to take it's just hard to take so let's go back let's go back to ah the 17th at 11:30 p.m. all the time is eastern standard time and this is 
Imelda. <clears throat> this was back on the 17th. Now, they have the technology where they can destroy this storm. Why don't they? Instead, they intensify it. So, 17th, 1130 p.m., and here you have, well, the making of those plasma torus. You will be quite, uh, well, maybe not, whatever you, however you experience <laughs> looking at what is happening. I don't know, but wow, we had a lot of plasma in Texas last night. So this is the 18th at 2 a.m. Wow. Look at all of this, the plasma torus. I posted a video just yesterday on what we are seeing on radar. Hey, Imelda, this same place. But what we are seeing now, a few hours later, is Imelda that is a bit smaller. Doesn't look like it's going to produce much, right? Looks like you're getting some rain. The 17th at 2 a.m. Let's go to the 18th at 3. No, 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 no. Sorry. Now, I swear I get confused, guys, but this is the 18th at 2 a.m. I think I just did this, right? Okay. Imelda getting smaller. So, the 18th at 3.44 a.m. And I will, to the subscriber who asked me to post on what's happening in South Dakota as well as Minnesota and Wisconsin. They flooded out in areas, but this is Imelda. Okay, it looks like she's being held in place, right? At 2 a.m. and near two hours later, same place. The plasma Tauruses going on in Texas. Here, this is at 1.30 p.m. yesterday on the 18th. You see the very powerful high frequency blast out of, uh, on the border of Mississippi and Alabama. And Imelda has grown. She has grown and she's getting hit with frequencies. So that was 18, uh, September 18th at 1.30 p.m. This is the 18th at, well, that's interesting. Wow. It was the 18th at uh, approximately 6.30 p.m. Okay, interesting. Nothing. Where'd my video go? Gone. I'm telling you, I am so frustrated because now, you know, I've been working on this new, well, uh, I use, but new to me, computer and I am experiencing so many very bizarre things happening and it is very frustrating. Okay, well, I can't seem to get that. Let's try one more time. Ah, here it is. Okay. Okay, Imelda. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, she's grown in size, but she seems to be quite fragmented. Quite fragmented. And do you see what's happening right up there? Okay. Getting hit with a frequency. That's what the hole is all about. But it's all, you know, in, it's breaking apart. You would think it's breaking apart, but it's not breaking apart. Okay. 6.30 p.m on the 18th. And this is 
uh, 1030, 10.36 p.m. You can see all of the frequencies in this. This is the 18th. You can see the sawtooth frequency, the, uh, the teeth at, you know, the, the periphery of the high frequency heating as well. The frequencies are going right through this. Um, wow, major pulse, major pulse taking place. This is uh, around the Houston area and the extremely low frequency coming out of Galveston, Texas, this line the, the pulses have been very intense in and around Southeast Texas. Here we go. Look at these pulsing frequencies coming out of Mississippi. Uh, the green that you see show up is a frequency that is far more powerful than just these little ones with the blue. All right. Um, the 19th at 1, well, 2 a.m. Wow. Another blast of very powerful high frequencies coming out of Tennessee, the border, Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, and look at Texas, 2 a.m. this morning, and Amelda, uh, okay, well, you've got this squared off precipitation here uh, that is caused by frequencies. But do you see that the red area is staying pretty much in the same place? Though, Amelda seems to be moving out of Texas. Ah, but this section of Amelda is being held in place. Now, these high blasts coming out of Mississippi, Alabama, coming out of Tennessee. Does it just affect that area? No, no. Can I tell you if this blast is, uh, you know, the purpose of it is to affect Imelda? I can't tell you definitively, but it could. Look at these extremely low frequencies coming out of Alabama, yes. No, yes. Alabama. Uh, all of this affects these storms. So, as you can see, the red area is where most of the precipitation is falling, and they are targeting certain areas of southeast Texas. All right, so this was at 2 a.m. this morning. This was at 4.29 a.m. and look at Texas. Wow, you've got an awful lot of those plasma tauruses that I just posted on yesterday. But look at Imelda, same place. Would climate change, global warming hold these storms in place for days on end? No, no. And there's so much going on that really should beg questions in adult minds. But, well, I also, if you have any information about Iowa, about Minnesota, the flooding, I will get to South Dakota. Just not in this video because this is happening right now. So, yeah. Wow, powerful pulses. Is it a surprise 
that so many of us are not sleeping due to these frequencies? No, it is not. But, okay, Southeast Texas still getting pummeled and it's 4 a.m. It's been going on for, I showed you, since the 17th, late at night, and held in place for 24 hours. Here is 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, still in the same place, still in the same place. But at 12 p.m., and it's a, a, that was two and a half hours ago, do you see, do you see Imelda have any horn? Not at all. But you see the little nanotechnology just uh, creeping in. So this was at 12 p.m. two and a half hours ago. And this was the video that I posted, but I could not. Uh, I can't because of volume. I, I mean the audio. All right. Oh, wow. So that was only, um, an hour ago, an hour ago, this is Imelda. Now you can see frequencies right here. If you look closely, you'll see the ripples, but, ah, oh, she's, beginning to develop more of that well train a train of severe storms at off the periphery of Imelda uh, and people are just thinking that this is natural weather I, I'm I'm just astounded at the abject idiocy. This is current time. Is it current time? No, this is, this is at, uh, just about two or one thirty. This is current time. And the train, the cabooses are they're coming together. They're, they're hooking, they're hooking on to one another. Look at the frequency coming out of the Panhandle, Florida. And wow, it has a, look, I used to see the solid frequencies like this one. You see this at, uh, off the coast of North Carolina. This is what we used to see. Now we see these uh, frequencies that are, well, it could be the neutral beam blips that they use to create plasma toruses. The red is pretty much in the same place, though it seems to be now a little bit west and look at what's taking place now in the Houston area. These more eruptions of precipitation and I would not be surprised if this, this man-made precipitation comes together with Imelda. Look at the precipitation that's being fed right into it from the coast. Right here. It's being these little dots of precipitation moving right into Imelda. My God. And we can't get through to people that weather is absolutely being used as a weapon. No, 
you don't have these tropical storms, tropical depressions that wall off. That's not a natural storm. Right down here, you can see the straight, very defined line with, uh, with its jutting out. I mean, it's cut out. What am I saying? Right here. This is not a natural storm. This is being brought to you by man. Yes, it's very upsetting. Now, it's also, you, you can see how it's being fed with moisture. Look at the cloud that is developing right here. The cloud that forms out of nowhere right here. You can see that there is a faint cloud uh, circular pattern right below it. Then these clouds erupt. This is what is feeding Imelda. And look at the creation of cloud right here. This is that train of storms right over in Louisiana. Now, is it a power plant? It may be. Could it be high volts of electricity shot into our permanently ionized atmosphere now? Yes. Could it be hit with lasers? Yes. You see a square right no, that's part of, I guess, the map of it looked like a square, a scalar square. So we don't know. There are many ways. Look at how it is the periphery of Imelda being hit with the geoengineering, the aerosol spraying. I don't know what to do, guys. You know, I, I feel sick watching this. I, this morning, I just felt like I was going to burst into tears. And if I feel this, how do you think these people are feeling? Being targeted repeatedly. Just moved back into my home after Harvey flooded it out. And now I'm in a shelter again. Look at the line developing in this cloud right here. Look at, look at this, what develops as a, like a rectangle shape. You can see the faded portion right coming up. Now, nothing about this is natural and we can't get through to people in it. And so people suffer and suffer and suffer again and again and again. Well, that pisses me off. First responders in Southeast Texas have received hundreds of high water rescue requests from people stranded in their cars and homes. As Courtney Zabowski reports, officials say the flooding in some areas is worse than when Hurricane Harvey hit two years ago. You know what? And these people who, and so many people can't stand, you know, my videos because I'm not a reporter. I didn't, this was not my second career. I didn't come on here to have that neutral voice. Um, I'm just like a nobody who's concerned about a lot that's going on. That's who I am. So don't watch my videos if you can't stand how I, well, you got my feelings and you got my words. Okay, well, that's, that's all I can do. But... These people, they look like they have almost this joyful glint in their eyes as they're reporting. Yeah, it, it's, and I'll show you the government officials that also look like, okay, uh, I understand that Americans on the whole are very disintegrated, very disintegrated. They are not healthy human beings. So, they, these news reporters, hey, you know, I can report all of this. Um, and I live in this area, and I probably know some people who have been flooded due to Harvey. 
and I might even know that the same people are being flooded again, but you never experience, you know, it's like, I, I could never do this job. I could never, ever do this job. Tropical depression in Melda is unloading over parts of southeast Texas with heavy rain and flash flooding. The flood water is nearly 16 feet high in Dayton, and cars are sinking in Winnie. Water over cars, homes, and half of them are repeats from the harbor. I think right now we're just in state of shock. Sheriff's deputies are trying to reach people stranded in their homes and a hospital. It was just rising and rising, and it was like this for hours. The sheriff says the flooding is worse than when Hurricane Harvey hit two years ago. We were definitely prepared for a storm. What we weren't more prepared for was for a storm to stall on top of us. In Beaumont, Texas, more than a foot of rain has fallen in some places, and first responders have received requests for more than 200 high water rescues. <sighs> Officials say some areas could see up to three feet of rain before the week is over. The storm spawned several tornadoes, including this one in Highlands, Texas. In other parts of the state, residents are starting to clean up fallen trees and debris. It was shaking, it was just very loud rumbling, and just it was lightening up. Mm. The National Weather Service has issued a flash flood emergency for the area. Residents are being told to shelter in place. We just weren't prepared for it to stall over us. To stall over us. You know, government officials, these guys, they know nothing about the Texas Weather Modification Association. Where tropical depression in Melda is dumping heavy rain and unleashing tornadoes across the state. Melda is moving north with winds of up to 30 miles per hour. The storm spawned several twisters east of Houston, damaging homes and other structures. Janet Shamlin and her crew became stuck while covering the storm, so here's her report she was able to file. A deluge in southeast Texas. Cars sinking in floodwaters and stranding drivers. Relentless driving rain in the town of Winnie forced Riceland Healthcare, a hospital and nursing home, to evacuate. This is the power of tropical depression of Melda. The, the rain, rain accompanied, accompanied by thunderstorms, thunderstorms lightning, and, and tornado warnings. In Baytown, about 25 miles east of Houston, some drivers risked going through the rising flash floodwaters during rush hour. Others drove through a tornado in Highlands, Texas. The twister crossed a road in the path of trees, power lines, and cars. Some homeowners are already starting the cleanup of downed tree limbs and debris from roofs. Coastal areas experienced some of the worst of the storm. It was shaking. It was just very loud. All right. Galveston, Texas. This is live stream media, and I can't play it. I'll get a copyright strike. Everything will be linked to below. There are some areas that it doesn't look like it was hit with much. You know, look, I didn't think. I thought last night... All right, is this like another Hurricane Barry, you know, where there, and I hate to use the word hype, um, because there were people who had to suffer the consequences of Barry, but it did not manifest as dramatically as they were reporting it would. And I really thought I would wake up this morning and not find what I found. Overnight, the Houston, Houston County Judge. Unfortunate first responders, we all know that the safest thing to do is to stay home. And, and that, that is what, what we're asking folks to do right now. We're at a moment of life safety, and, and what we need the community to do is to stay where they are. If you're at school, stay at school. If you're at home, stay at home. If you're at work, stay at work. I know that a lot of families have their kids at school. We have been in touch with the school district, and that's the safest place for them to be. Please don't try to go outside and pick up your child. They're safer at school. If you're driving, 
try and get out of the vehicle and try and make it to uh, to a place where you can shelter. Um, if you feel uh, that your life is in danger, call 911. But of course, folks are safer and in their homes than being evacuated. Yeah, it's. I listen to these government officials, and I think, first of all. It, it, did she get out of high school? I mean, she looks like she's maybe 16. Um, is it because I'm just getting so old? Maybe. But they speak as if you are children. You are children. If you're in danger, call 911. Uh, shelter in place. Don't go out and... Don't get your kids and, oh my God, I, uh, uh, what we have manifested here in this country is just, oof, man, it's hard to take. This, where is this, Beaumont? Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, Texas. Okay. I, I sometimes feel like I'm just going to burst into tears looking at this. I, I'm so... Over and over do we have to live this, and I don't have to live the consequences of it. What are these people, what are these people, what are they going to do? So many people cannot afford to just keep repairing the destruction that is caused deliberately now, I have many playlists, weather modification playlists, geoengineering playlist, climate change fraud playlist, and many of the videos on those playlists connect the dots between Agenda 2030, the weather events, what is taking place, not just in this country, but all over the world. So please check out the playlists or do some research before you leave your comment. You're a nut job. <sighs> Beaumont. I mean, there are areas where they're saying that the rain has been nonstop, nonstop, over uh, like a 36 hour period. Should this beg questions? Absolutely. It really should beg questions. So, what is going on with people that they are not questioning? The repeated dramatic flooding that is taking place now all over the country. South Dakota got hit hard. Uh, areas of Nebraska got hit hard. Minnesota, Wisconsin, areas hit hard this week this week now we have texas again and if you're not upset about this fine good if you believe that god is in control and jesus is going to come back and restore everything well i will say to you jesus is late jesus you are late you are late late in coming. Well, the, well, the problem, problem for us, us the only reason, reason it was so dire from, from about midnight to three in the morning is the water, water was so high in the streets that if you weren't in a high water vehicle, you couldn't go anywhere. So the fire department, all ambulances were just uh, essentially stuck till we got the right assets in place. The fire, firemen were able to get the right uh, high water vehicles in. We were able to bring in the county's high water vehicles. Now we're operating their boats. The water's receding, as you can probably see. It's receding, but then all of a sudden we come to the downpour like now, and then the water will come back up. And it's, it's been, been doing, doing that since midnight. I, I think that probably the rescues are probably uh, minimal. 
Uh -huh. um, most, most of who we've been getting are, are a lot of elderly, elderly and a lot of disabled. disabled. Okay. Okay. That was last night. I heard him on this live broadcast being interviewed. Rescues, close to 300. He says minimal at midnight, but then hours later, it's up to 300. All right, All right so, so a lot, lot of people, people are just, just hungering, hungering down, down in their, their houses, houses and now just have water in them. Yeah, it's like I see almost like a glint in the eye, like houses, houses and now just have water in them. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I, I just. Well, well whatever whatever the government, government needs the warning and, and the weatherman weather gives you the warning, warning you know, you need to take it seriously. And most everybody in this town did. But part, part of the problem, problem I think we, we estimate we were to get six inches an hour um, at, at, at some point. Okay, you know, oh man, yeah, heed the warning, heed the warning of government officials and your mainstream media reporters. The only problem is, is that weather is being used as a weapon and the mainstream media meteorologists are not really doing a very good job in predicting what is taking place, which means that everybody needs to be prepared for anything. Because when man controls weather, well, he controls the world. That was LBJ, the president, who was, well, his ego. That's what they used to say about LBJ. His ego was as big as Texas. And Johnson was from Texas. Po Port Bolivar. Yeah, fortunately, a lot of the homes right on the Gulf are elevated, but the town is flooded out. Here's another live broadcast. And I will link to it below. You know, these are the areas currently that are receiving a lot of downpour. Please, you guys in Southeast Texas, could you weigh in? Let us know that you're okay. Tell us what's going on. And areas, you know, in Louisiana, Lake Charles area. I can't believe that we've got to live this over and over and over and over again. I will never get used to it. I will never have a neutral voice. I will always now. Uh, people are getting destroyed, you know, and when you, when you try to put yourself in their shoes, you know, you realize that this is not fun. All links are below.